Welcome back to the channel, everybody. We have to run the saw some today because I have a problem. I have a lot of rock, but a lot of my rock is either cut and polished or just, well, it's a rough rock. So in today's video, we're gonna be cutting some stuff. I have four of these. Uh, this is a Las Choyas nodule. All right, so uh, it could be a geode on the inside, you know, a nodule. Uh, we have a volcanic uh, non-rhyolitic exterior here. Um, and uh, I believe they kind of, they come out of an andesite flow, I think. I might be, uh, correct, correct me, my Mexican uh, geology is way off. Um, but uh, so these are nodules and I have four of them and we are going to give them a cut. There might be a cavity on the inside, but generally speaking, it's either going to be solid chalcedony all the way through or chalcedony on the outside with quartz on the inside. So I have four of them. Let's head over to the bench. We're gonna plan the cuts a little bit because I wanna make, I wanna, I'm hoping they're, they're good. So we plan that. This is what I'm working with today. You can kind of see these guys look like. You can see that uh, some of the host rock is still on it in places and in other places, well, you can definitely see the chalcedony in here glowing. Okay, well, we got to plan the cuts because some of these are kind of weird and I want to get the very best cuts that I can. I feel like avoiding the little nub there would be good, but yeah, you can really see on that. Uh, that uh, might be a uh, might be something good in here. Well, all right. So I have uh, this. Is my I love these things. These uh, paper, glass, plastic, metal uh, writing pencils. So I think this guy I want to cut and get the biggest facing possible. So I will mark it kind of where I want it so that we're in the middle. We're in the middle here. And I do this so that when I'm over at my saw, I can line up the cuts. So we'll go half on that guy. I think this one, we're not gonna cut through that little nub. I think leaving that on and we'll focus on getting a nice big cut through through this. And that will be kind of a good, good look here. These lines really do help a great deal when lining up at the saw. This one has a weird flat bottom and it does kind of want to naturally sit like that. So we will go with that. Now this guy here is kind of a weird one in that we almost have like two different bubbles that were formed in the lava flow. And I'm wondering if it, should I try to follow the crack around, cut through it? I'm tempted to cut through it, like run that way. So I think that's what we'll do. Uh, I don't think there's a real right and wrong way to uh, do this. You know, we are, uh, these aren't exactly like a thunder egg with like a pressure ridge where you really need to be mindful of how you cut it. So I'll get these uh, clamped, the first one clamped up in the fixture now. Every time I show this fixture for holding these uh, obscure shaped uh, round rocks, I get questions about it. This is the Slabosaurus rock holding fixture, which uh, as far as I can tell is not available to be purchased anymore. Maybe it is, maybe it's not, maybe it's coming in a stock, out of stock. Uh, I'm not exactly sure, but uh, there's currently, as far as I can tell, no website that covers this thing for sale. So maybe uh, that's subject to change at some point if they can uh, make enough of them, but this is what I'm using to uh, hold these odd rocks because a rock like that shape, um, there's not enough purchase in the vise to really grip it. You need, a, you need a thing, you need something like this. Okay, let's head over to the saw. Well, if you're new here, you probably haven't seen this before. Uh, this is a homemade auto feed slab saw running NF70 white mineral oil, and I got the rock in that vise, which is clamped into another vise now. And the way I do this is I run my vise this way, and I want to make sure the rock's going to fully cut all the way through. 
So I back this up. I'll push the carriage forward and make sure the rock will fully be cut by the blade. Oh, right about there. So we go all the way forward and I have this auto off chain, which is connected to a power switch. So when it extends, it pulls the switch off. So if we go right about there, I think should be good. And I'll just kind of gently loop this. I'm going to be staying with the saw. So it's uh, fine and we'll give this a good extra tightness and we will line up our cut now. So we, uh, I'm kind of, I have that little orange mark and I'm gonna eyeball where I want my cut here and get this kind of lined up. I think I'm thinking right about there. I think that should be good. And one more turn and I'll check it on both sides. I'm happy with that. And then there's a little thing here that uh, twists and uh, the vise sliding back and forth on the carriage gets locked in place. So that ain't moving. And we can check and make sure there's no deflection of the blade. We don't want it to be like wibbly wobbly over uh, the curvature of a rock. And then back it out just a little bit. We don't want to start with the rock contacting uh, the blade. We're good here. Give everything a double tightness. Tightness check. Shake it. We're locked in place. And now all we gotta do is fire it up. So now this is the plug for the saw. So we're energized here and I don't trust that switch anymore. A couple of times I have turned the saw on while it's cracked like maybe uh, it doesn't fully disengage the off after it's done cutting and you go to pull that carriage back, the switch flips on and uh, well, you get a face full of, of oil. Um, not a pretty saw, but it works. Let's, uh, let's make this happen. So you can see there's the motor spinning. There's the worm drive of the, the gear for the carriage. And now we wait. One thing that I, I pretty much never share is when the saw is cutting, because the saw takes a long time, it cuts one inch every six and a half minutes or so, six and a half minutes. Uh, I usually clean the shop. All this stuff, <laughs> it's a good opportunity to clean. So the saw just stopped and I gave it a, I let it cut for a couple of extra minutes. And then I let it sit and the oil mist will settle, which that's what we want. Let's see how we did. Oh, look at that. Very, very nice. Very nice. Uh, I got to get this one. Uh, well, let's back this up here. I don't want to drag it across the the blade. Oh man, that is lovely. That is lovely. Well, let's, uh, I gotta get the oil off this and we'll do the next one. Well, I got these all finished up here and you saw this one already, which is, uh, quite good. This is a, a quite a nice, uh, nodule here. Very pretty. Colors are beautiful. We have that one little crack right there, which isn't the worst, but you know, ideally, uh, that would be entirely solid. <laughs> uh, you know, same with the other side. Well, how about the ones that you haven't seen? This one that we cut that has uh, this little nub on it. Looks like that. That's not bad. That is not bad. There are a couple of issues with it that maybe you can see. We have these little pockets here that had almost like a clay-like material in it. And it just kind of like came out. I also kind of uh, scraped at it a little bit. I feel like blasting this with the, the textile gun would definitely get this totally, totally uh, cleaned out, these little pockets in here, which is fine. I can still face polish this and it will look 
pretty good. You know, the, the chalcedony in here is nice. We got some nice quartz. It's overall, it's just, it's good. I like it. Not as good as this one, I think, but still, you know, we're, we're pretty good. Going right along, we have this one here, which, uh, you know, seemed really good. We had that, like, little spot right there, which made me pick it. And, <laughs> and we got nothing. We got nothing at all. It's just a dud. Which, that's fine. Duds, duds do happen, but now it's uh, one less rock that I have to store and do something with. And last, and quite possibly the very best, look at that pure chalcedony. It is looking good. And uh, we get this kind of wet here. Look at that. It's like little orbs in there. Ultra fine banding. Ultra, ultra fine. Very nice. Very happy with that. That's going to polish up beautifully. Beautifully. So, uh, yeah, you know, at a, uh, well, four isn't necessarily a good sample size, but three out of four, I'm, I'm happy with it. I'm happy with this. This is my real prize here. Very happy with how this came out. I love the, like, the little light blue chalcedony around the exterior. And when this takes up, when this gets polished up, it's going to look fantastic. Well, go check out the website, currentlyrockhounding.com. And there's tons of stuff up there. There's books, there's podcasts, there's photos. There's all kinds of stuff. Most, most of you haven't seen it all. Go check it out. And with that said, I will talk to you on the next video.